What is up everybody? I've got an exciting video going on today. We are actually going to be needing to take my Yukon over there, um, but we're going to go ahead and get something I wasn't expecting to be able to afford for this uh, coming summer of racing, but it's going to be a huge thing. It's going to make a big difference, but I'll wait till you guys see it to tell you what it is. I am, however, already running a little bit late, so let's get a move on. I'm gonna not film any of this just because I wanna be courteous of the uh, guy that is here, the one who I'm doing the transaction with. So I'm going to catch up with you guys once I have it, and then I will show you guys what I got. All right, so I'm at the gas station here, had to get some gas, and uh, you may be able to see behind me, it took a little bit longer to get than I expected, but you may be able to see, you can't see out my back window there, and that's because what I got was a trailer. Now I'm still down here, so I'm gonna focus on just getting it home, and then I can show you guys what it looks like on the inside and talk about the features that it is but I'm finally gonna have some way to haul the car around next year okay guys so it's actually a couple days later but we're gonna finally check out what this trailer is all about because yes indeed that is what I went to go pick up I went to go pick up this glorious trailer right here let's talk about what this trailer offers feature wise as you can see behind me, the most obvious thing are going to be the fact that it has interior lights along both walls there, as well as ones like this up top, or this one right here. Uh, it has interior lights, something I was not expecting from a trailer. This is the biggest thing that this trailer has that I was not expecting a trailer to have, or I wasn't looking for in a trailer, but I am so thankful of. Has an AC unit. That is AC, so I will be able to stay cool in here if I close all the doors. And the doors don't bar from the outside like on my buddy's trailer, so no one can lock someone in the trailer, which is kind of a benefit if you want to shut the door and get into the AC. Some of the other features that the trailer has that I was not looking for, it has these proper trailer cabinets. These are actual cabinets meant for going inside of trailers, racing trailers, They've got the special locks on them so that they don't pop themselves open through driving. And it also means there's a lot of counter space in here too that I can benefit from if I needed to do work on something, pop up my computer up here. I can even, I can check uh, laps that I've done, things like that. It also just so happens to have in these cabinets a winch. There is a winch in here for pulling the car in to the trailer when I'm done. I obviously can still drive it up in here, but I can pull it up with a winch if I wanted to do it that way instead of driving it. Especially since my car is a pretty big car, it'd be hard to get in and out of it, despite the fact I can just hop through the window. It's still kind of nice to have a winch. Makes things a little bit easier, a little bit more convenient. Now I mentioned the interior lights, but it also has full electric. So obviously the lights need something to work. They obviously need to have something like a generator or shore power to work. But the whole trailer is kitted out with electrical outlets. That means I have electrical outlets, like regular home outlets, in the walls of the trailer, all over the place. Light switches for the lights inside of the trailer as well. Uh, this means I can plug my computer in. If I'm on shore power, I can plug my computer in. If I have a generator in there, I can plug it in on the go. I'm also considering putting a TV up in here so that I can have a monitor to work off of with my computer on the go. It'd be very convenient as opposed to just using the computer screen itself off my laptop. Not that it's a bad thing, but it would be nice to have that functionality if I wanted to use it. On the outside of the trailer, we just so happen to have an awning that runs the outside, so I can create a nice shaded area when I am pulled up somewhere and I can park the car in that shaded area. I do like having a garage, but this basically is a mobile garage. So as nice as the garages are at the track, I still have everything I need. I have a dry space that I can work on my car. I have a dry space that I can be, a space to use my stuff, store my tools. It's going to be super beneficial for going out to the track, as well as going to tracks further away, which I certainly want to do now that I have a trailer like this. As well as with the awning on the outside of the trailer, there's exterior lights on the ex outside of the trailer. So I have exterior lighting. So if I am on a generator or on shore power, I can light up the outside area by the awning 
and have light outside and inside the trailer, and I'm not limited whatsoever on what I want to do, what I can do. Those are just some super nice benefits to the trailer that, once again, I wasn't looking for. And of course, there are many little bits and bobs about this trailer that it came with that aren't worth mentioning by themselves because they're not as massively awesome as my AC unit that I have or the awning or the exterior lights. Um, but the trailer is packed with many, many features. And of course, it's gonna do me a lot of good this coming season with all of those things. And I'm not done. There are things that I also intend to do to the trailer before I go back out next season, such as the lack of a tire rack, which is something I'd love to have. Currently, I only have one set of wheels, but if I had a tire rack, then I could start looking at getting myself maybe a set of rain tires so that I don't have to ever run in the rain on racing slicks. So now that you guys are acquainted with the trailer, we're gonna go ahead and head back into the garage where we're gonna go ahead and talk about the benefits to having this trailer beside me being able to pull the car around because it does mean some stuff for this winter as well. <sighs> All right, so the idea was film the trailer, put it on the side of the house, come in the garage, and talk about what we're doing this winter. But, <laughs> My luck with cars struck again. Now I haven't really introduced you guys to my collection of cars, so I'll go ahead and start by doing that and then explain to you what just happened. Now if you guys look over here, we have my 2000 Audi A6 and my 1999 Audi A6. That is my daily driver, that was my first car, I'll never get rid of it, and that is my parts car for that car. Unfortunately, right as I left my job, that car decided it was going to have an engine failure. This car is my 2004 Land Rover Discovery 2. It's got 52,000 miles on it, and I drive this for off-roading purposes. It is not a daily driver. I try to keep the miles low on it. That is my 2001 GMC Yukon XL with an 8.1 liter V8, capable of towing 12,000 pounds, and I bought it right during the summer. This being my newest of the vehicles, there is a lot that needs to be done with it. I needed to get a new radio in it because this one's a piece of crap, and I was going to put in a touchscreen radio, get a backup camera, for towing a trailer, and those were going to be some of the projects that I was going to get done to this car during the winter. But let me explain what just happened to this car. Now in a typical GMC Yukon, you have park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, three, and four. When I was backing up this trailer, I went from having a reverse gear and a neutral gear to having two neutral gears. You may have been able to hear there, I just stepped on the gas when it was in reverse, and you could see I didn't really move more than what gravity was willing to push me. Now unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong with the Yukon. It was working, I put it into drive because I was getting a little stuck, I pulled a little bit forward, I put it back into reverse, reverse was all of a sudden gone, I put it back into drive, drive was all of a sudden gone. Um, I unhooked the trailer, I pulled it out of there like I towed the vehicle out of that spot to the road, and then my drive and all those gears started working again, but reverse was still gone. No sudden noise, nothing sounded like it broke. Um, no transmission fluid leaking out the bottom. No clue what it is. So, if any of you guys have any ideas, do please leave it in the comments because I'm gonna have to get that rebuilt soon. Now, the broken vehicles aside, jumping into what that means for this car, and honestly, this video was supposed to mostly be about what was gonna happen with this car during the winter, um, because I had a trailer and that does change out a few things um, But the front carpet here is gonna have to come out That was something we were talking about getting done that does mean pulling out the dashboard So we're gonna have to pull out the dashboard to put the front carpet or pull the front carpet out um, And then I also have to modify the floorboard in front of the passenger or driver's seat to allow my feet to sit there properly So we're gonna have to figure out a solution to that now one of the bigger things that we're going to be doing this winter Because I have a trailer now is I'm going to be pulling these door panels off and taking out these windows all is one thing, because that's a lot of unnecessary weight. The reason I kept it there was I was driving the car to and from the track, and it was nice to have windows working so I could roll them up and be out of the elements when I was driving to and from the track. Now that I don't have to drive this car to and from the track anymore, though, it doesn't matter. I can pull these windows out, and it can just ha not have windows, which is something I'm really looking forward to. That's one of the biggest things with the trailer, removing all of that weight. I'm also going to remove the radio and the sound system because I'm no longer driving it. Granted, I didn't need that before, it was just nice to have, but since I'm not going to be driving this anymore, that's going to go. As you can tell, my engine bay is full of useless things that I do not need in this car. 
I don't need most of what's happening over here. I am going to get rid of a lot of the plastic that is going up front up here, as well as, and this is the biggest thing that's happening in the engine bay, we are losing AC. Not driving the car, I don't need the AC anymore. So AC is coming out, that should help with some cooling problems that I'm having. Also the AC system can lower the car by, I've been quoted maybe about 100 pounds, I don't know how much I believe in that, but there's probably at least 100 pounds that I can pull out of the front of the car here, including the AC and all the other mini little bits and bobs that I don't want in here anymore. Now coming around the back, you remember that we got my front to be on some pretty solid bushings, and the rear was also supposed to go on solid bushings, but unfortunately the tool broke. So I have no way of putting the solid bushings into the rear, but I've got three months to address that. So we're going to finally get the solid bushings put into the rear of the car. Now the last thing that I'm willing to mention that is going to be done to this car between now and next season is I'm going to try and get a tune done in it. I want to get my ABS completely disabled, which is something I have not been able to do yet. Although I could pull some fuses, it's not the same thing. The ABS is going to go away. I'm going to get rid of all traction control and I'm going to give it a nice good tune, hopefully at a good shop to get all that taken care of sometime this winter as well. That's the last thing, like I said, that I'm willing to talk about because that's the last thing that I really expect to be able to get done this winter. It's kind of an iffy subject if I'm even going to be able to get that done though. So those are the things that we intend to get done this winter. Hopefully my misfortune uh, does not keep up. Hopefully I can fix that Yukon because it is was my daily driver after my other car broke also right as I left my job. Um, so look forward to an engine or a transmission rebuild on a 2001 Yukon and a lot more work done on this race car throughout the winter as well as some sim racing content. Anyway guys, I think that's just about gonna do it for this video. It was just meant to be an update video anyway on what was going on and to show off my new trailer. So I'll leave you guys with that and I'll see you in the next one.